the problem why no one has been able to get people out of prison uh, is that they have suspended, as you know, habeas corpus, and that we have not been thinking in terms of the uh, still existent uh, get out of prison avenues that they have. Now, when I go to court, to the trustee now, I don't have to do it in the court, I, I could, but I can do it to the trustee, and I lodge my ecclesiastical deed poll, then I can follow up from that ecclesiastical deed poll with a claim for my property. Now, my, my property could be my brother, my father, my mother, my cousin, okay, that's in prison. And why can I claim that? Because my deed poll has established my standing as a trustee holding real property in trust, I am no longer a slave. The sensitivities have to be squashed and they have to treat me like the slave owners of old. Now, as a property holder, I have now have the right to place a claim over property that I believe has been stolen. Unfortunately, the person in prison uh, is deprived of their rights. And more than that, they have been locked into a position of executor and um, administrator. Now, I can argue all I like that they've been tricked into it and all that just won't work. The, the, the system is strongest in property law. So I can say, you have taken my property, I have established my position, return my property or face the penalty. And I can start racking up the, the sin of uh, thieving my property. All right? So I believe that uh, that is um, a simple way and a powerful way that once you stand up and establish yourself, you can help others. Okay? So I hope that's, um, I hope that's helpful for you on that question about brethren who have been kidnapped and imprisoned. Um, uh, when you address the judge as your honour, uh, aren't you showing a higher status uh, than, than you? No, it's a... It's a it, it's as, as much considered a, um, a courtesy and a custom um, as it is. And it ties into another question that people have. They say, look, this is all fine, but I have a family and I have to feed myself. And it's the old story of, I would love to do this, but I, I, I can't afford not to get my social security or I can't afford not to have my driver's license. Built into the system is the premise. If we give an oath or a vow which is the only true contract, all paper is a memoriam, we give an oath or a vow under duress, then the vow or the oath has no effect. If we sign under duress, then the signature has no effect. So they can claim everything against us, but if we can prove that it has been um, uh, given under uh, duress, then it has no effect. So I, I do say to anyone who's fearful about um, taking a step or signing or, or saying, well, I still have to sign my name here and am I really agreeing to executor? If, if it is a matter of survival, then the law itself in its most inherent form says you must do what you need to do for survival. But it is duress. It is not law. And it can be overturned at any point once you can show and, and establish clearly uh, your standing. So I wouldn't fear the question of saying your honour. I wouldn't fear signing your name. I wouldn't fear living in the system when in reality we do what we have to do to survive. Now the law protects us when we know that principle. Anything you do under duress is automatically null and void in terms of evidence uh, and validity of contract. That's a fact. I've um, got a question here that uh, Terry uh, punched in for me. Thank you, Terry. And I'm sorry <laughs> to everyone that it's turned out this way. Um, uh, do you, the question is, do you think that Abraham Lincoln was written about in prophecy? i tell you what, and non-Americans probably would get upset about this, but Americans wouldn't, that there is a feeling and a sense of those that in America that there is something special about this time and there's something special about America. And there is. America is an essential part of the system of control 
that puts the world in a prison at the moment. But Americans are an essential part of freeing the world if only enough Americans wake up and stand up against what is happening. So in a sense, it is a paradox. And I do believe that there is prophecy to it. Now, I don't subscribe to uh, the, the Mormon faith. I have respect for those that follow Mormons and live good and lives um, and respect one another. I, I have a lot of respect for the way I see, um, you know, at least openly, and so I take people on face value, uh, what seems to be a sense of, of value. And I also believe that um, there is often a, a, a divine guidance in things, <clears throat> even if it appears to come from the wrong angle. Uh, and quick, sorry, I know this is a long way answer, but just quickly, what I was saying in the last few weeks when, when people who are promoting the executor letter have been attacking me with all kinds of curse and curses, I've actually seen a, a divine hand in that because through that, a lot of what I've been talking about tonight has come from reflecting on that. So I actually think that some of the prophecy about the role of Abraham Lincoln and, uh, and America is probably to be found in a number of those sources. But other than that, I can't quote you other than the, uh, the place that the beast in Revelation came onto the land is America. So there's, there is a direct reference to prophecy. Well, we've got, so we're going to get through these and then I'll, I'll, I'll be wrapping up in a few minutes, but I, I do want to answer as many as we can questions. I grew up this family and used to jokingly call it a diet Catholic. How is this not the diet matrix just playing the devil's advocate here? Well, the matrix, you know, the matrix movie, Hollywood is, Hollywood is the modern version of public notice. So 300 years ago, uh, a town cry would come into the square, they'd post a notice there, the post a notice board, and if it was an important one, they'd, they'd, they'd pronounce it. Most people were at work, you know, have some guy in the street right reciting all these crazy sounding things, but that, that was their claim of public notice. Well, the Matrix is an excellent, awesome public notice. I mean, the public notice says that the evil is not them. They're not the evil anymore. The evil is the machine. Uh, the machine is now automated. And that our role in the world is just a battery of energy. Well, <clears throat> I think that's about as accurate as you could possibly make the description of the world. So wasn't that the... Uh, the world is, is like the matrix. The matrix is like the world. I mean, the film was made as a public notice of, of how the system works. And they do that. Why do they do that? They give us public notice so that they stay, quote, unquote, in honour. I, I know it, we, we think so often when you see their system that they don't give a damn. And there are elements of the system that don't give a damn. Those that are the ruling elite, when we talk about the Khazars and the Zionists and people who are the false you know, parasites and, and um, who are running parts, these, these people are severely mentally ill and really can't manage themselves out of a paper bag. But the people who support them, uh, the Jesuits and others, are very serious about staying in honour. And uh, so Hollywood is the public notice. I'm looking for questions, questions, questions. Again, I'm very sorry that we can't get the, the internal uh, question or the internal live voice up. Uh, I'm just going through. Uh, yes, well, okay. One court to another. When you are a trustee holding real property that is divinity uh, of a trust, you are a court. Who knows truth? Okay. So when you go to a court and you demand something, you are a court. You don't have to call yourself a sovereign. Sovereign's just a, an official of the Roman cult. But you are a court, absolutely. So I hope that answers that question. Uh, the Georgia Stone's just another offer to contract. I'm going to have to get back to you on that because I haven't really studied enough of that. So I don't want to offer an opinion on something I don't really, I haven't really studied enough. So I'm sorry I can't answer that question. Uh, good question. I'll have to come back after I have a read of that. So I hope you don't mind, but I'll come back to you on that one at another call. I promise I'll answer that. Uh, where is the body of law also used where there is no dead body to be found? 
Um, guest 26, I'd need you to give a bit more information on that and then I can answer that. Question, Frank, do you think Eucadia um, to be a very tight group? The strongest foundation based on, on the realisation that every single hierarchy that's ever been created has either been taken over or utterly destroyed by a more powerful force it means that the, the best structure we could ever have is one of uh, viral knowledge, viral model, where people get together at a local level and the strength is from the bottom up, not the top down. Now, I know that is, is, is completely reverse, created, <laughs> but uh, I think that ultimately is, is the only way that uh, this model has a hope of succeeding. Now, I'm just being brutally honest. I mean, yes, I've spent 25 years, and it's, it's a pretty depressing thought to think that you spend all this time, and at any moment, if they really, really, really wanted to, they could come in and just crash, crash and destroy Bottom up is the only way, ultimately, that it has any hope of success. It says, okay, so we have um, a Ben Fulford quote. I'm not quite sure if that's more a comment or, or a question, so I'll leave that. We kind of pretty much reached that. Let me just check to see if there's anything come through. Uh, I do have a question here. This is a question uh, from uh, Robert. Um, uh, Robert asked uh, Frank, do you send the summons deed poll to the clerk in their living flesh capacity privately, carry the public position of the court, or do you submit it to the public record as part of your case? Uh, when you send it, you send it to the executors and administrators, uh, clerk of the courts, da 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 So the assumption is that, um, and it's actually exactly as it's written on the, um, the, the deed poll instruction canons. The reason you do that is that when you send it to the executors and administrators, uh, you are actually tapping into what is the principle of notice to agent, notice to principle. See, when you name someone, when you say, I want to send it to Mary Bloggs, you're actually not sending it under the principle of notice to agent, notice to principle. You might think you are, but you're not. Uh, it's only when you send it to the officials in the description, uh, executives and administrators, can you actually enforce the principle of notice to agent, notice to principle. Uh, so public, private, I think that's all mute based on that answer, Robert. So I hope that answers that question for you. Can, so this is a question from Ch Chilling Witter, Whitya. Can I do a deed poll with all the cases I have already done the sentence for? Uh, I still have the paperwork. Okay. If they're coming after you, okay, the de deed poll is, is a turning point to establishing your rights. Obviously, it hurts to, to prick your thumb or somewhere else to, to get blood. The hope is that one deed poll, and I gave an instruction of how we'd follow up deed polls tonight in terms of those steps. So one deed poll is, um, is able to then be used to, to ram home the point. If you want to issue more than one deed poll because you have more than one action, that is entirely up to you. What I would say is that if you've got long-standing issues and uh, they've deprived you and you're hurt from it and you're still facing torture from it, which a lot of people do, particularly if you've been convicted of a criminal offence, that's a value judgment that you make. But just know that I've made a commitment and that many others have made a commitment that you're not going to be left alone purely on sending a deed poll and then twiddling your thumbs. There is a follow-up to it and I really look forward to supporting all of you in seeing that succeed in what you need. So it's a value judgment for you. So question for membership. Now I'm going to tell you something about membership and numbers, and I think this is in, in, important. Um, at the end of the day, if there is an ecclesiastical statement of fact, which is that every man and woman from the beginning of time to the end of time is a member of one heaven. That is just... A, a, a principle of, of, of fact in the covenant. In terms of membership numbers, membership numbers is a visual proof in this temporal realm of membership and trust. That's all. But it is also uh, a unique piece of time, Eucadia time. 
Now, uh, in the 